Pete, what's up, bud? Dave? Hey, what's going on, buddy? Yeah. Can, Hi, man. How yeah. you doing? <laughs> I'm in my little studio. Yeah, here, you know? it looks cool. It is member-supported Hawaii Public Radio and All Things Considered, our off-the-road interview series and getting into year two now after two years of doing these and people back on the road in a lot of cases and hearing about a lot of wonderful projects. This is a cat that uh, I get to reconnect with for the first time since 1998, I believe, was la <laughs> the last time that I ran into him, and I'll tell him about it in a second. It was uh, It's Pete Sears. Now, he's a keyboardist, bassist, songwriter, producer, and does a, a lot of other stuff, too, but he's really known for work with Rod Stewart and Jefferson Starship, Hot Tuna, so many different session and live projects over the years. He's got this cool new band, Moon Alice, which includes Lester Chambers of the uh, Chambers Brothers, and uh, it's really a, a real pleasure to welcome him because not only has he jammed with some of music's heaviest cats and has lots of great stories to offer he's a good storyteller and obviously we love stories on the show but he's got a cool noteworthy hawaii experience or two that we'll, we'll uh, get into it's pete sears joining us today on off the road and uh, a real pleasure brother thank you so much for doing this good to be here dave it's yeah. great to have you on. And uh, it was back well, in... What island do you... What, which island do you on? This is uh, which... Oahu and in Honolulu. All right, nice. Yeah, right down the street from the Diamond Head Crater where you oh, were right. in yeah. the early yes. 70s. <laughs> yes. I remember it well. Do you really? Well, let's just start there since I brought right. it up. As much as I can remember anything these days. <laughs> it was like 70... It was, New, it was New Year's Day of 73, correct? That's right. Going into... Yeah, that's right. Going into 73. Yep, yep. And, and you were uh, there with Neil Sean and Greg Erico or Rico? Yeah, it was a short lived band, you know. We had uh, Neil Sean. It was all instrumental. We couldn't find a singer, you know. So, <laughs> um, so we liked, you know. So, um, uh, it was it was Neil Sean on guitar. It's just you know way before Journey, right? You yeah. Know? Neil Sean on guitar and Greg Rico from Sly Stone on drums, and I played bass. And Herbie Herbert, who ended up managing uh, Journey, was the uh, road manager and uh, manager and it was called sears sean Rico, and um we did a we played the diamond head creator festival and uh and um uh yeah it was it was it was an amazing ma amazing uh experience you know looking out there seeing see it, those all those people out there you know what wonderful. do you remember of it other than just the sea of people are there any specific memories any funny stories anything that happened that day any other bands on the bill or, or a famous oh, concert? oh yeah i mean i mean copperhead were on the, i just you know i just left copperhead to go play with nicky hopkins in a, in a band he was getting together which didn't materialize but uh um anyway uh hutch hutchinson was playing bass a good friend of mine oh yeah he, he came in, you know, he's, he's, he lives on the islands, you know. And, yeah, he's been on and, the show uh, before. I know Hutch. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, he, he, he was playing bass with Copperhead, with John Cipollina. Yep. And, uh, so I went over, I just popped over there to their stage to uh, when, when, when it was their time to play and, and just hung out with those guys. And, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it was just a crazy rock and roll period, you know, just walking around in the ocean and on the beaches and just, uh, you know, young rock and roll musician, you know, I mean, what's, it's, it was an amazing experience, the whole thing. Were there other I mean, bands I, on the bill? Uh, yeah, but I can't remember, I can't remember. Who they no were. worries. Yeah, no worries. They had a lot of bands. I'm sure there was, I don't know who the headline was. I, I can't remember. Was Sorry, that a man. Bill Graham show? Uh, no, I, I don't think it was a Bill show. Uh, um, and I didn't see, don't remember seeing Bill there, but, okay. uh, yeah, he did a few uh, a few uh, creator shows. Tom Moffat was our local promoter. The late no, you know, maybe maybe he was involved. I don't, you know, that's not one of my memories. But, uh, sure, no, it's cool. But, well, that's it, it, it was it was a wonderful uh, experience, and uh, just looking out, at, uh, just being in Hawaii, you know, looking at <laughs> the uh, crater and then the ocean in the distance, and it's just a wonderful place to have a concert. I don't know what happened. I guess they don't do it anymore is that correct they don't do them like they used to they did they did one in 06 they did one in 07 they've never done one since and they had stopped doing them at some point probably in the 70s yeah. or, or maybe 80s and you only had done the one is that correct uh yes we, we, that's right okay With that back. i mean i used to play, i mean yeah uh, i should mention that greg roley uh, uh came and sang black magic woman and uh you know he did a, a bit as a guest you know, wow at your show yeah. greg raleigh from santana yeah, singer right. and keyboardist yeah, yeah that's right. and uh so that was nice there's a recording bootleg recording knocking around but, yeah so that's the only time i did the crater festival but um when i was with jefferson starship 
a, a, a bit later mm -hmm. in the 70s in the mid 70s on 74 onwards um you know we used to play honolulu and I, I don't remember the name of the place it was a big place you know? blaisdell arena neil blaisdell center nbc arena yeah, something like okay. that probably yeah yeah it, 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 we, we played it, we, we'd always we'd always put um the hawaii show at, at the tail end of a long tour you know <laughs> <laughs> and uh in the, in the states and we, we, we'd um and then we'd all well at least my wife and i jeanette and i would go off into the into the islands and um and maybe hana or something we used to rent a house in hana wow and uh that was special you know and uh so yeah and, and we 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 uh, used to you know go to the seven sacred pools and and it was it was it wasn't a state park yet i don't think it was you know there was no cut no car park or uh, rules or anything you just kind of use your common sense and wow. <laughs> you know but we'd hike up the up the falls and you know it's just a, it was swimming in the rock pools and incredible memories you know and meeting some wonderful people we got to know some uh, local people that that um told Jeanette and I about where all the really out of the way places were you know it was really nice so uh, you made a connection yeah. over there it sounds like on Maui oh yeah oh yeah My, you know it's, it's really a the whole of all the Hawaiian islands have a special place uh, in our, for Jeanette and I in our hearts. Any and other experiences like that that stick out? That's very visual and will sound great on the radio. People will appreciate and yeah. and respect that. Are there any others? You, you mentioned the other islands. There's something on Kauai or a big island or yeah, this island. Yeah. That... I think Kauai was wonderful. We, we, I remember playing a wedding there. That was that was with David Nelson band. That was that was a special thing too. And uh, and you know we've been there just. I remember, God, one thing. I was back in the seventies, one of the early Jefferson Starship tours, and uh, Jeanette and I were going from—I think it was from Maui to to Kauai—and uh, for the first time, but we went on the uh, hydrofoil, right, the, the ferry. Okay. You know, they had the ferry back then, which they discontinued, I yeah. think, because they were in danger of hitting whales, or, I think, or something like that. That's, or, I'm not sure why, but. It was a really convenient way to get around the islands. You know, you just load on the ferry and yeah. pull your gear, and and then you unload. You know, but but we were sitting there in the uh, in the in the little, little um, uh, you know, right there with all the people sitting there looking out the windows and stuff. And then a couple of young Hawaiian cats come up to the front and just just start singing these beautiful songs. Wow! On your on the very ferry, cool. yeah, very cool and. And uh, you know, I was just really digging it, and and then we got in conversation with them, you know, Jeanette and I did, and and, and they said, yeah, well, we're we're, uh, we're on our way to a wedding on the, <laughs> on the on the on the jungle side of the island, and and um, he said, I am too, <laughs> a, a, a private wedding, and you know, Hawaiian wedding, and we we'd love to invite you to come, you know, and we but we had all this stuff set up, you know, and so we said, oh man, that would have been wonderful, you know. And, uh, you know, and um, so he said, no, sorry, you know, so, and so, um, but thank you, you know, and, and then we, we got off the ferry and said, what the heck did we just do, you know, no. <laughs> <laughs> we should have just gone with them, you know, and uh, probably would have made some lifelong friends there, you know, at the, at the uh, and it would have been a really wonderful uh, traditional Hawaiian wedding that we could have, but uh, anyway, I don't know where those guys are, but, we, you know, I'd like to thank them, you know, for, uh, for that oh know, wow but, well they have a bit on the show acts of kindness that they always do on uh, all things considered not on my yeah, part but, the national one and that that's kind of like one of those yeah. experiences you're kind of saying thank you to someone who anonymously did something nice uh yeah, made you feel yeah. good um back then well that's fantastic now you're joining us today uh bay area i guess i'm guessing i don't know which town are you living in these days yeah, san rafael yep. which is uh, north of, of san francisco that it's makes sense the bridge. That's what I would associate you with. So it was back in 98. I was in Boston at uh, WZLX, and I booked you guys with Tuna to come into the oh, radio right. station. And it was like you all played the midday show. We had the whole band, all the equipment in there, and yeah. uh, Michael and you and, and uh, Yorma and Jack. And it was really fun. Uh, and yeah. it, it was back in the days when you guys were, like, I think, opening for the Almonds and stuff, too. And, and now you're, you're doing this exciting right. uh, new release. You've got this current band, Moon Alice, which is probably a 
new name. Think about that as I as I give you a chance to talk about it. It's a very new name, I'm sure, to almost everybody who's listening, who's driving in their right. cars. And, and it includes Lester Chambers. Now, that's someone they'll know from the Chambers Brothers. Time has come today. Legendary yeah. song. And so for all those folks, this is completely new to Pete. Explain the musical, psychedelic, soul kind of sound that you're after and how this group uh, of interesting cats yeah. came together. Yeah, well, we, Moon Addis, we, we've been around a little while um, in, in a different form, you know, and then uh, so we hired, um, but, but you know, we, uh, we just worked together uh, for a few years, you know, and then um, then we heard about Lester, you know, we got, we introduced to Lester Chambers and, and his son Dylan Chambers. Mm -hmm. And um, they came and sat in with us, you know, and it just went so well. Everything just clicked, and um, you know, and and uh, then and we also had the T sisters got involved with us. Three sisters who were amazing people yeah. and amazing singers, all individually in their own right, but their harmonies are just like smoking. And um, so. All of a sudden, we had this amazing front line, you know. <laughs> so we, um, uh, it, it is a new band, you know, and and we, um, uh, so it's Barry Sless, you know, my bandmate in uh, David Nelson band. He plays, uh, he plays guitar, of course, and sort of musical director of the band, and, and John Molo on drums, you know, from uh, oh, he's just played. Play everybody, everybody phil Lesh and stuff i Amazing. know him i've yeah. known him a long time yeah and uh so and we you know we're, we're the rhythm section i play the bass and um and jason crosby is on keys and uh when he can't do it we have mookie siegel from the david nelson band that fills in for him you know with the band and roger McNamee uh, playing he's a great rhythm guitar player and singer and writer and he's playing uh, so he's it's really his band, really, you know, and, um, uh, you know, and uh, we got, and of course, Lester, the singer, and David and uh, Dylan, you know, just sing, they all sing their own thing. But Lester, you know, we get a chance to play these souls, like the original Chambers Brothers hits, right? <laughs> you know, it's kind of cool, you know, we're doing them uh, with a new take, you know, although they, you know, um, and uh, like, like time, you remember the big hit they had? Time, you know. And, time has uh, come today, brother. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and um, and we do. Let's get funky. We love peace and happiness, and uh, just all these. And we do. do we also do Dock of the Bay, and we do People Get Ready because let's do us good friends with Curtis Mayfield. Oh, know, Curtis, so, yeah. right? Yeah, I remember that. And and uh, so we do that song, and he plays his harmonica, and and Dylan uh, just is like it's an amazing soul singer. You know, and and uh, we do, you know, a lot of great material, new and and old. But it's really not a cover band in that sense. You know, it's it's when we're actually playing playing that stuff with the guy that sang on the original, right? Yeah, you yeah. Know, original stuff, and and they just he just won a they just won an uh, Academy Award, right, for the documentary that um, was shot in in Harlem. Uh, the soul um, summer of soul you know and um so that uh we do you know do those songs you know and uh, um and we do some originals and uh, the tea sisters do some originals like woo woo and uh, that was one of the singles that came out and um and uh we do let's get funky too that's that's um uh one of you know lester's songs so i get a chance to get down a little bit on the bass occasionally but uh, <laughs> but i'm enjoying just playing the role of just bass player i mean i'm not i was playing keys years ago with these guys but um but i'm you know i'm playing bass now i'm really enjoying uh that because that's uh very satisfying getting to play um dock of the bay you know with the, with the and people get ready with a real soul singer. So that's cool. Had you back in the old days seen Otis Redding? Uh, no, I didn't. I, I mean, I saw him on, but when, I, I mean, when I was in England, I grew up in England and uh, and I was active from 64 onwards, you know, professionally, right? And and uh, so I saw him on TV, but okay. I didn't sit by. But I played with, you know, I've, I've done session work with um, 
Um, oh, some monsters, brother. Well, live to save them because you got a lot. I got a few monsters yeah. on your thing. You don't worry. I got you. Your your yeah. resume is out of control. But you were talking about these songs. So you you painted a picture of what the music is like that folks, um, you know, how to describe Moon Alice. It's the psychedelic soul. You're playing a lot of that original stuff that the Chambers Brothers were doing back then, and then similar sorts of flavors and. Uh, for uh, the record, you have this new EP, Full Moon Alice Volume 1. And share a little bit of the background of these tracks that are on here because it's it's sort of like a uh, uh, compilation from different recordings. And, and as we were, you were just sort of talking about, some of the ones I'm going to point out, like Turn On Your Love Light, People Get Ready, Time Has Come Today, Take Me Back in the Earliest Years of Your Life. You ever Where, where did you first come across those songs when you were uh, a young Pete Sears? Uh, well, uh, was, people get ready. I mean, I, I played with a band back in 66 called Fleur de Lis. And uh, I remember Jimmy, uh, it's when I met Jimi Hendrix for the first time. But, Tell that uh, story. Before, That's right, a good right one. Before the experience. You know, I was, yeah, I was in, I was in uh, Eric, uh, a couple of guys in the band were staying with Eric Burden in, in the Animals House in London. And uh, I was just visiting them, you know, sitting in the kitchen and Chas Chandler walks in with this guy and just started chatting, you know, and he said blue jeans and regular, you know, sh uh, like a windshield thing on and just, you know, we just had this really cool conversation, you know, for about half an hour. And, and uh, you, know, I, I you know, I figured out he must be a really good player. You know, he played with Little Richard, I think, or something like that. And mm -hmm. I've been thinking, this guy's probably really good, you know just looked like he it was really good and <laughs> growing up he told it and then Chaz Chandler brought him down we were recording a song called Amen which is an impression song right? and uh and he came down and and um uh and overdubbed but nobody knows what happened to the acetate you know it's, it's <laughs> some rock and roll books say I have it but I don't I wish I did and uh anyway so then then Fleur de Lis um you know, we we did people get ready and things back then, and, and the singer was really good, Phil Sawyer. And he, when Stevie Winwood left Spencer Davis, uh, Phil left us to go play with him, oh. play with him. And and he he, he did a song, one one song called um, "Don't Want You No More." I think he sang that one. And and uh, but then Phil sort of left the music business. He something happened, and I'm not sure what, but. Anyway, he disappeared, but he had great talent, you know, as a guitar player and singer. Um, then we get, then we had a, anyway, that's it. So I was introduced to those songs, like, uh, you know, uh, the, the people get ready and- What about Turn uh, On Your Love Light? How about yeah, the great, that's a Grateful well, love, Dead yeah, connection. I, I just heard that like everybody else just was aware of it, you know, and I didn't, uh, ever, I never played that one before, but, and um, time, time, you know, time has come today, you know, that was, uh, with the Chavers Brothers, big hit, you know, I just heard it on the radio, you know, I, I never played it, right? And never saw them back then? No, no, I mean, I was deeply immersed in my own scene, you yeah, know. Yeah, you were huge. What happened then. back then, it was, it was no internet, nothing, you just kind of went where things took you, you know, and I wandered from scene to scene, and, um, but, uh, but I, I remember thinking, this is cool, you know, I like this, and um, so now we're playing it, and pretty, pretty much the same way we, uh, it fits well with us because with Barry Sless and John Molo and everybody, we 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 we, we really love to improvise. You know, yeah. Same dead, improvisational thing. With me, it's drawing on my <clears throat> 1967 um, psychedelic period with uh, the Sam Gopal Dream, which is a Indo sort of jazz rock uh, outfit trio in um, in England in London, playing these long psychedelic uh just improvisational indian ragas with uh with um uh, the, uh in with sam sam who was a tabla player and i draw we used to draw on that you know and um so time has come today has a it breaks down into a psychedelic in the section in the middle and yeah so I'm sort of i'm drawing on that unconsciously you know drawing on those crazy young same periods in London or in my you know early career and um and just you know just playing uh, impro improvising with Barry on uh, and uh, when he's because uh, he's really good at that you know it really is and uh, 
And um, yeah, we go off into this, this ether and, and then we, can, we draw back to the regular song. You know? So, and it's just wonderful chants. And we try to incorporate that into uh, songs as possible, the jamming bit. You know, you talk about that jamming. It's pretty interesting when I was reading some of your history um, and that note of long improvisational, thinking about all that you were just saying and talking about that 60s period of your life and in Great Britain. It's also, I read, and you'll correct that this if, if it's wrong, um, but I read that when Brent Midland passed away, keyboardist with the Grateful Dead from 79 to 90, that you had been invited to audition to replace him. And if that's true, tell that story. And then perhaps start by going back to your first time, because I know you've gotten to actually work with people like Jerry Garcia, and take us into how your world first came in contact with the Grateful Dead. Oh, okay. <clears throat> well, um, you know, I was, I was aware of them, you know, in the 60s, and I was in London and everything, but uh, I didn't have a record player because I was sleeping on people's floors and moving around from scene to scene and band, you know, playing and uh, but the uh, uh, so it was 1970, and I was with a band called Stone Ground, uh, the very first Stone Ground. I I I come to America in 1969 for the first time. Um, made my way over there, and um, first band was with Lee Stevens from Blue Cheer. We had a band called Silver Meter with Mickey Waller on drums. I did an album, and then I then I ended up playing with Stone Ground. And in 1970, and we were staying, we were renting a house in Mill Valley at the time. Uh, we recorded already back uh, an album back in England. Um, so we were staying in Mill Valley and somebody introduced me to John Cipollina. And so I went down to John's house in King Street for John Cipollina from Quicksilver. Legendary Silver. guitarist. Bad dude. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, and we just, uh, we really hit it off. John and I did, you know, we really hit it off. I ended up living with, you know, we went, went to his, living in his, uh, in his uh, gun room, <laughs> antique gun room, which is both politically incorrect right now, but, but he had, it was, it was a, a room full of these old Wild West things, right? You know, but nothing else, just those things. But anyway, um, so we, uh, I was also a good friend of Richard Gossett from KSAM FM radio. Ah. And we, I used to hang out with him and he said, why don't you bring some guys down and we'll do, try doing an impromptu sort of broadcast from the record library here. And so I, so I got John and I, so I talked to John, he got, he called Jerry and Bobby and we came wow. down, we got together. Mario Cipollina was John's younger brother who ended up with Huey Lewis years later, you know. <laughs> um, so he, he came down on bass and I, and I played the piano and we did this. And with Bobby, Bobby saying silver threads and golden needles and all this stuff. And Jerry was on pedal steel guitar, no drums. It was just, and John Cipollina on guitar, Mario on bass. And I'd play, I'm playing the old upright piano in the corner. And you're all in a studio, in a radio yeah, studio all, together. All, 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 but not a real, it was like we, we set some mics up in the radio, in the record library where all the, yeah. all the albums are like, you know, it yep. wasn't a, it was a real, it was just before KSAN started doing it professionally sure know, with, uh, doing it from the record plants or uh, pacific high recorders this was literally an impromptu just lots of dead air space and jerry quipping and sure making jokes all on live on air you know i could do that back then on the radio and it, there's a bootleg knocking around somewhere if you put it in it comes up you know what are some of the songs that you guys played i mean you know silver threads and golden needles and and um uh God, what, else did, what else did we do? I can't remember. It's all sure. I have it written okay. somewhere. On the set, but, um, yeah, it was it was it was it was fun anyway. So Jerry, we all hit it off, you know, and uh, and then I was on. Uh, I went off to back to England to play with uh, on Rod Stewart on Every Picture Tells a Story, playing piano on that one, and um, Maggie May, all those <laughs> great tunes. On John Baudry, blues band. After that album, I came back to the States for his first U.S. tour, Long John Baudry Blues Band, played bass. And, um, and Jerry, during that tour, I had a conversation from a phone box somewhere out there in America with Jerry, and he asked me to play on his uh, play piano on his, uh, on his solo album. It was wow. going to be his first solo album. But I couldn't do it because I was out on the road. And it's all about 
timing in this business sure right any business i suppose right yeah. just, you know i i'd love to have played with him but anyway to cut a long really long boring story short <laughs> i um ended up uh, I, I was uh, I'd left Starship. I was in miserable my frame of mind. I was happy to leave, to have left Starship at that point because I wasn't really getting along uh, in the, that final version which became Starship. They dropped About eighty-seven Paul or so. Paul Cantor had left, and, and David Freiberg had left. You know, and 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 uh, but it was you know we did. I just did that one album, Knee Deep in the Hoopla, and with them, and and uh, so it wasn't really working out and. But a uh, great album, but uh, for that, if you like that sort of thing, which I didn't much. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but the um, uh, very unlike the original, completely unrecognizable totally. from totally. Uh, the uh, Jefferson Starship. That was anyway, um, but God, good luck to him. God bless him. Um, anyway, uh, so we went to, um, uh, what was I talking about? Jerry. <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Jerry. And, and, um, so Jerry and I, you know, just just started playing together, and and did he so, call you? He called you. I worked with Nick, Nick Rabinitis Blues Band. Sure, uh, he came down. We were doing a, a a benefit for Brian Wilson, not the not the not from the Beach Boys, but the uh, fellow that lost his legs were were cut off with, by a train when he was uh, protesting uh, weapons shipments to El Salvador, and. Um, and which you know I was involved with that too, but and we were doing a benefit for him, and sort of uh, and so I asked Jerry if he wanted to come down and sit in with us, and he came down and he said oh, I'd like to sit in with you guys, but I don't want to sing, I just want to just want to play, you know. So the blues, you know. So we Nick Rabinitz, of course, is a great singer. So so we just we just it's it's some video of that knocking around, you know. We just. Um, played uh, uh all the nick's blues songs and and jerry would just sit back they just stood back there having a fantastic time just playing blues so solos it's a wonderful thing you know to, and uh so all this so i had you know our, our paths were interwoven you know and he was a good friend and he and steve Parrish, you know and, uh his but and uh i had him he cut he had they'd also played the uh um, Soviet American Peace Walk, which was a bunch of Soviet citizens right. who didn't like what their government was doing, and and they came over for a peace walk through across America, you know, and uh, we did a big show at the uh, band shell, you know, with um, and uh, Jerry came down and uh, there was twenty thousand people because he was here, you know, but and Grace Slick came down and Paul and I, I asked about fifteen people to come down. And uh, just trying to, you know, find the, the healing spot in in all this awful stuff that keeps going on, you know, generation after generation. Just right. trying to find connections with people, you know, from across the nations. And, anyway, but so, so Jerry, uh, that was good. And then uh, right after that, so I'd left Starship, you know, uh, about 80, 1987. And... And I was just playing with Nick, you know, and messing around and having fun. And, and then I, I was on a uh, down in Big Sur camping with my my brother's family had come over from England. And then we heard about uh, Brent dying and and uh, with, in the Grateful Dead. And, and but I, I I I thought about it. I thought, shall I call Jerry? And I thought, nah, it's just too weird to call right away after something like that happened. It seemed mm -hmm. tasteless to do that, you know. And so. So we went through our tour of, you know, then I came, but it was on my mind, you know, then I came back and I, and, and, um, and you know, and he said, J Jerry said, well, you said, we, we said, you don't really sing though, right? I said, well, though, Jerry had played on my solo album, Watchfire, and I, I was singing on that, sort of, you know, and, but like, um, and um, that was a human rights rainforest thing we did, you know, and uh, Jeanette and I did together. She was a lyricist. Um, so Jerry uh, went ahead and uh, gave me a big box of. He said, "Oh yeah, well, God, yeah, great, you know." And and, and he gave me a big box, cardboard box full of tapes and 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 uh, books, you know, with with the songs in them and stuff, Grateful Dead songs. Uh, because I used to go, I used to go to their shows, but I never 
played that stuff. I was off doing my own thing or whatever bands, whoever I was with, I didn't hadn't learned that stuff, right? And you know, and there's some tricky uh, stuff in there, you know, um, time signatures and that sort of thing. You have to be aware of, you know, you, you kind of can't just jump in, you right. know, like you can a blues song, right? And so, uh, so you know, I, so I started trying to learn this stuff, and uh, and um, and then Jerry and Bobby came over to, to my house, to our house, Jeanette, our house in Mill Valley. And we, you know, we had a nice, played the piano, I said, okay, great. You know, and then they went downstairs and we worked on some songs and somebody had given me some information that it was, uh, they wanted, um, uh, they wanted a, a sort of synthesizer. I didn't really want to replace the B3 and piano thing. And my head was completely the opposite direction. Right? After leaving Starship, which had become this sort of sequence of thing, you know, with it, I, I, I wanted to go back to piano and B3, right? So, so I kind of psyched myself out. Anyway, I, uh, I, I ended up going to, uh, people at the office were saying, oh, you got the gig, you got the gig. All the road crew were telling me, you got the gig, man, it's great. It's, yeah, it's got to, you know. But I said, I don't know. I just don't <laughs> get that feeling. Yeah, I don't know, man, I don't know. And, um, and sure enough, uh, um, you know, uh, I went, I went out there and Vince was sitting there, um, you know, when I, I, I went to front street and played with them, you know, and stuff, but, but, uh, but I, I should have just played what they had there, which was a piano and a B3, you know, I just, anyway, so, so I, it went okay, you know, but I, I just, um, so you played with the uh, whole band too at Front Street, is what yeah, you're yeah, saying? Yeah, 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 and and uh, that, as I was leaving, Vince was sitting there. Vince Welling from the Tubes, I, I he's talking sat, about. I went sat with. I didn't feel good about it, and I went and sat with Bob Hunter with her backs against the uh, um, the doors outside. You know, just sort of sitting there looking at. I said, I don't know, you know, just talking about it, and 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 then, uh, but you know, so Vince, so I got the call, and, and Jerry, was, you know, was telling me that that I would. I was going to be the second choice, right? So now, uh, so I thought, okay, that's good, you know. But uh, however, um, I think Vince was was great. I, I loved his singing. He had a strong voice, you know. And mm -hmm. um, you know, so I, I uh, somebody told me that that's that's, prob that's what happened. My voice wasn't strong enough, and, it, and it's not, you know. So although I've worked on it since a little bit, but anyway. Uh, but Vince was great, you know, I think. And uh, it's just sad what happened to him. Man. Just, uh, just didn't, you know. Oh, I mean, a lot of rough stuff in that camp. And uh, I mean, just fascinating stories with you and and really, really grateful that you would share them because you've gotten to do all this different stuff. As a final note before we wrap it up, when you think of Rod Stewart, we haven't mentioned his name at all. Is there just one funny time or story that comes to mind, a, a, a little quick one, just something humorous that makes you laugh <laughs> that's a cute one? Oh, well, I mean, I think back to this one. It was the last album I did with Rod was Smiler. And 1973, 70, into 74, we recorded it. And we were doing a, a, a Chuck Berry song called Sweet Little Rock and Roller. And, uh, and Mickey Waller, the drummer, fantastic drummer, you know, but really that, uh, not the spandex sort of drummer, but he was, a, you know, he just sat there uh, um, on his little drum kit. He was one of Charlie Watts' favorite drummers, you know. And, and, and he, he was sitting there and he was playing. He always brought his dog down. He had a boxer dog called Zach. He'd always bring it down to the studio. And this dog was sitting there right in front of his bass drum. And he'd just sit there while we were recording, you know. And so when Ron Wood launched into the uh, first, you know, Chuck Berry rift and da, 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 you know, doing his thing. And the minute he started playing, uh, I was on piano, you know, and the minute he started playing, um, Zach, the box, Mickey's dog starts barking, you know, <laughs> Like, woof, woof, you know, and, and it, so it's like riffing back and forth with Don. It was incredible. I mean, it was, we we couldn't, we could barely keep playing with what it was so funny, you know, at the <laughs> time. And this is all live, you know, in the, in the studio, and the and his barking's leaking into all the mics and everything, and and you go woof, woof, and that bronze going da 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 da, da you know, and, and uh, we launched into the song. We managed to keep it together. We finished the song, and we and and we we ended up using that tape. Great. That's on the album. It's called uh, "Sweet Little Rock and Roller" with uh, with featuring <laughs> Mickey's dog uh, Zach. It's great. It was you Rod know? Rod laughing too. 
Oh, everybody. Everybody, you guys just had Everybody thought it was very, very funny. And it was, you know. And it was a really impromptu thing. And, and of course, Rod ended up using it on the on the, on the track, on the on the album, you know. I mean, Rob was a good producer that way, man. He just went for the, he went for whatever was right. We'll use that one to, to go out with, and that'll be a fun one. And uh, <laughs> Rocking song. Yeah, it's a great one, and a great one to, to, to wrap up uh, an interview with the great Pete Sears, a huge guest on the show, and Moon Alice. They have their new uh, EP. It's a collection of tunes. We've been talking about Full Moon Alice Volume 1 that folks can look for, and we'll keep our fingers crossed. We can see you guys out here in the Honolulu area, and thanks also for the great stories about playing here in the islands and uh and we appreciate um, it maybe if you want to just hit a little something on your keyboard to say goodbye to us if there's a, oh, well, a sure, favorite little up. jam Perfect. It's perfect. I'm high fiving you, giving hugs, and thank you, Pete. It's great. Pete Hi, Sears Pete. on the show today, and a lot of fun, brother. See you, mate. Be safe. Aloha. Bye. Aloha.